Just taking my temperature actually, the old fashioned way with a glass thermometer. Now I left that in for a full three minutes and traditionally nurses read thermometers on the backs of their hands. And I think you can see here that there's the 35 degree mark on the left and the 36 and you can see it magnifying. So my temperature there is 36 point, well I'd say it's 36.3 wouldn't you? So it's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm feeling quite well today and my temperature was 36.3. If you read a textbook it normally tells you that temperature is supposed to be 36.9. The point I'm actually trying to make is that individuals temperatures do vary. I know if my temperature gets to 37 I actually don't feel very well, I can feel that I'm starting to get a fever. So my temperature is normally about 36.3, 36.4, something like that, that's normal for me. Other people might run a temperature which is slightly higher normally, 36.8 or 36.9 or 37. Occasionally people might have a slightly lower temperature than I do even, maybe, maybe 36 can be normal. So there is a range, typically you'll find temperatures are between 36.3 and 36.9 if you take them under the tongue. Actually in the UK now we have lots of electronic ways of doing temperatures but the way I've just done it is quite an accurate one. So normal temperature just vary within limits. If the environment is very cold, the body temperature can start to drop, of course. After, after a certain amount of time, it can start to drop. And this would be called hypothermia. Hypo, low thermia heat, low body temperature. And we say that low body temperature starts when the temperature gets down to or below 35 degrees centigrade. Conversely, of course, during exercise, it would be normal for the body temperature to rise. That, that's quite normal during exercise. This can become a problem if it gets too hot. If the body temperature becomes too hot, that would then be called hyperthermia. This often occurs if for some reason the body can't, uh, can't sweat normally and can't lose heat via normal mechanisms. For example, if we're wearing far too many clothes on a hot day. Now the next thing I want to look at about temperature, when we've looked at these notes, is the difference between core temperature at the centre of the body and peripheral temperature on the edges of the body. So here we have a normal range roughly between 36 and 37 degrees centigrade. Now, in the early morning, when you first get up, the temperature might be a little lower than that. And in cold weather, the temperature may be a little lower because body temperature can drop a little bit. But it shouldn't drop below 35. That would be pathological if that happened. Now, children tend to be quite active and running around a lot, and their temperatures, because of the activity, can be slightly above normal. It doesn't mean to say that there's a problem it just means that the temperatures are just slightly higher than normal because of the activity. And in fact, with adults, it's exactly the same. If you go for a brisk walk or cycling or jogging, moderate exercise, the temperature can go up to, well, it can rise by a degree, up to about 38 degrees centigrade. And when people are anxious or emotional, this can stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, which can also cause an increase in temperature. And during hard exercise, vigorous exercise, the temperature can rise even high, maybe even going as high as 40 degrees centigrade uh, during vigorous exercise. But we wouldn't want the temperature to go any higher than that. If the temperature was any higher than that, would take to cool the individual down uh, fairly quickly. But that can be normal. 38, 39, even 40 degrees centigrade during vigorous exercise can be considered normal. What we're going to do now is look at the difference between core temperature and peripheral temperature. Now the core temperature is the temperature in the core of the body. The heart, the lungs, the brain, the liver, the abdominal organs, the pelvis, the main 
core organs of the body will be at core temperature. Now I recorded what was an approximation of my core temperature under my tongue. But to get an accurate core temperature we would normally put in a rectal thermometer. Having said that, the temperature under the tongue is normally only 0.1 or 0.2 of a degree below core temperature anyway, so it is a fairly good approximation of it. Now core temperature should be relatively constant. Now it is true to say that in the evenings a lot of people have a slightly higher temperature and in the morning, early mornings especially when you first get up, you can sometimes feel a bit cold. This is because the body temperature can be about half of a degree below the, the average body temperature first thing in the morning until we get going and do some exercise and warm up. So there is a slight 24 hour circadian variation. Do you remember that term, circadian? It means things that follow the the 24 hour rhythm. And core temperature should stay the same in warm environments and in cool environments. Now if the environment is very hot or very cold then core temperature can start to change. But core temperature should be homeostatically controlled. So on a warm day and on a cool day, the core temperature should remain at whatever your normal core temperature is. We saw mine was 36.3 degrees centigrade. Now quite a lot of people do know that there's a variation in body temperature with the menstrual cycle. It's not a significant variation. After ovulation, typically, the temperature can go down a little bit for the first 12 or 24 hours. Which, interestingly, is the amount of time that the ova can live for after it's been released. And then in the second half of the menstrual cycle, the second 14 days, assuming it's a 28-day cycle, the temperature is maybe half a degree higher, on average, than it was in the first half of the menstrual cycle. So people that are trying to conceive very often take their temperatures every day and then when the temperature dropped a little bit that might mean that the person has ovulated and then as long as they do so almost straight away they could take steps to try and bring about conception. Very important though, pass on to your patients this is not accurate enough to be used as a means of contraception. This must not be used as a means of contraception. Apart from anything else, you wouldn't know what's going to happen in the future. So, you know, you can't say that my temperature is going to drop in two or three days' time. Because remember, sperm can remain alive in the female genital tract for, well, probably up to about five days, actually. So, it can be used to aid conception. It must never be used as a means of contraception. So that's core temperature. Now peripheral temperature is the temperature on the surface of the body, the, sur the temperature in, in the skin, on the surface of the skin. And it's also the temperature in the hands and the feet, in the limbs of the body. Again, this varies quite a bit as we'll see shortly, depending on how warm or cold a day it is, what the peripheral temperature is. Because later we'll notice that limbs have quite a large surface area in uh, relation to their volume. So core temperature at the centre, peripheral temperature at the surface, and in the peripheries, the limbs of the body. Now in these diagrams we can see that the centre of the body, the core of the body around here, is all at 37 degrees centigrade. And this extends down into the arms. It will be cooler near the surface, 36 degrees centigrade, and it extends down into the legs. Now this is the situation you would expect in warm air. Because in warm air, there's quite a lot of flow of blood into the arms and into the legs. So that could be the relationship between core temperature and peripheral temperature. Core temperature in red, peripheral temperature in blue, in a warm air environment. But if we go into a cold air environment, the situation changes really quite significantly. Now in this environment, 
The red again represents areas of the body at 37 degrees centigrade. But even in the shoulders we can see it's a little colder. And in the tops of the arms here the temperatures drop to 32 degrees centigrade. Dropping down to areas of 31 degrees centigrade and areas of 28 degrees centigrade or even colder in the hands. I think we all know that on cold days we get cold hands. So here in the cold air the warm blood is kept into the centre of the body. And this makes sense because if the warm blood was to go down into the periphery of the body then more heat would be lost. Now if the hands are a little cold or the feet are a little cold for a little while that doesn't matter too much. So that's the sort of distribution between core temperature and peripheral temperature we would expect in a, in a cold air environment. I'd like us now to think about temperature detection. Now there are thermoreceptors in the dermis, in the lower layer of the skin. And these detect the temperature of the environment. And particularly, they detect temperature change. So maybe you're trying to go swimming in a cold lake or cold water. And when you first get in, it's absolutely freezing. It feels really chillingly cold. But then once you've been in for a little while, it starts to feel really quite pleasant. This is because the thermoreceptors, the temperature receptors in the dermis, are more sensitive to change than they are to absolute temperature. Now the thermoreceptors in the dermis are probably just free nerve endings. They're just free nerve endings that run through the dermis. They don't seem to have a specialised uh, peripheral sensory receptor in the same way that pressure receptors or touch receptors do. So they're probably just free nerve endings. But we do know that there are nerve endings for heat and nerve endings for cold. So some thermoreceptors in the dermis detect heat, others detect cold, but they're both temperature receptors. Now a comfortable skin temperature is probably around about 33 degrees centigrade. And how comfortable we feel is largely how warm the or cold the surface of the body is. But as well as that, there are temperature receptors deep inside the body that detect the temperature of the blood passing through them. For example, in the brain, in the spinal cord, in some areas around about large veins, and in the uh, peritoneum in the abdominal cavity, we have temperature detectors that detect the temperature of the blood actually passing through them. Also in the hypothalamus in the brain, we have temperature detectors. And whether the temperature detector is in the hypothalamus or in some other part of the body, that information is relayed to the hypothalamus. And in the hypothalamus, there are neurons which have a set level, a set temperature, and they are able to detect whether the blood is going hotter or colder than that set level. And when the hypothalamus detects that the blood is becoming too warm, it will initiate mechanisms to cool the body down. When the hypothalamus detects that the blood is becoming too cool, it will initiate measures to warm the body up. So really the hypothalamus is collecting information from the thermoreceptors on the surface of the body, yes, but probably more from the temperature receptors detecting the core temperature of the body. It is assessing that information and when it is assessed that information, it can then take measures to leave the body at the same temperature, to warm it up or to cool it down. This is why different ambient temperatures can result in the same body core temperature. An ambient means to do with the environment. The temperature in the environment at the time is the ambient temperature.
I'm holding here a model of the brain. I think you can probably see the brain stem at the base, midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata, cerebellum. This is the corpus callosum that contains the fibres connecting the two hemispheres of the brain. Here we see the cerebrum round about the top of the brain and the cerebral cortex round the surface there at the top of the brain. But the part I wanted to show you here was the area of the hypothalamus. This is the thalamus here, the area of the thalamus, and the hypothalamus is just below that. This area of the brain here is the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is the control area for many homeostatic functions, including thermoregulation.